one of the biggest industries out there is finance, is loans, uh, you know, mortgages, anything that, that has to deal with creation of money. And we have definitely found a way to connect this deeply centralized space of real estate ownership with DeFi, which I think is super exciting. more people are buying and holding Bitcoin. 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 Let's take a look at Bitcoin. Some call this digital gold. Everybody should probably have 1% of their assets in Bitcoin. Dear crypto community and blockchain buddies across the globe, welcome back to Kryptonites, the no BS blockchain channel built with the community and for the community. And today we have another mind-blowing guest, Yael Tamar, leader in property tokenization, a real expert when it comes to real estate and asset tokenization. Yael, thank you so much for joining us today. How are you doing? Amazing. Thank you for having me, Alex. Really excited to be here. Really excited to have you. And my first question for you is obviously your personal story, but also understanding why you really wanted to focus on the real estate field in particular. Let us know your thoughts. Sure. I hope I can match your energy, Alex. Just through the roof. <laughs> so my personal story is that I've always wanted to be an investor. Like I started on Wall Street working for a broker dealer, continued into M&A, private equity, and uh, just working through helping other people to invest. So when it, when it came time to, for me to grow up and become an investor myself, I realized there's very limited options for me. And, uh, you know, even with real estate, which is, seems to be like the most accessible asset class out there, very limited. So um, at the same time, I became a tech entrepreneur with uh, several fintech startups under my belt. So, you know, I've been working in the blockchain industry for five years. Um, on regulated pro you know, pro projects in the regulated space, um, as well as some applications and just a variety of things. So I decided to combine my knowledge of technologies and blockchain with uh, solving the problem that I personally had, you know, being able to invest in, in assets, in real estate assets. So that's how uh, initially my idea was born. And then I realized that solid block was down the block, literally, and then it already had a good track record in the field. So we joined forces with the uh, with uh, an initial original founder of SolidBlock. So, uh, you know, now we're co-founders, have been working together for a year and a half and doing great things. That's really, really cool. And real estate, obviously, is one of the biggest asset classes in the world. And like you said, everyone wants to buy a house or property or invest some of their money in that space. And, you know, speaking of which, I still remember in 2018 when Kevin O'Leary from the Shark Tank was talking about buying a slice of New York City's Plaza Hotel, you know, where you could buy a fraction of a hotel room, for example, and invest in a specific hotel in New York City. Uh, have there been any other cool stories like that since then? There have been many stories since then. In fact, uh, Sao Block has done the first ever commercial tokenization in a hotel in the U.S. for a St. Regis property called um, the Aspen Coin, uh, Aspen St. Regis. And uh, we were behind the tokenization of that. And uh, since then, there have been several hotels, several residential buildings, commercial as well. Um, you know, Realty is doing single family residential properties, even through Corona, which is fantastic. Uh, we've seen a slump in the, to in the tokenization uh, as of this year, but I think there's, there's been a slump in everything uh, because this year is definitely not a standard year. Um, but overall, you know, uh, this industry is growing and becoming more, more and more prominent. I'm glad to hear that things did install. And I would love to ask you a question, like why real estate on the blockchain? So just to play the devil's advocate, you know, we had Tone Vays on the show and he was saying that, you know, even if you can put real estate on the blockchain, corrupted governments can still confiscate your land or, or it's really it doesn't really give you the, the ownership like it would do to Bitcoin. How do you respond to those type of critiques of people who kind of don't really see it in that sense? 
I think they're absolutely right, but, but you're talking about a different use case. You're talking about the use case where we put real estate title on the blockchain and there've been several really good use cases and, and really good projects in the government, you know, in the countries like Georgia and Lithuania where countries put the ownership of real estate itself on the blockchain. Now, again, they're talking about super, super specific use case of where you're using a private blockchain to record the title. And the private blockchain is usually based on uh, uh, several nodes which uh, in, many, uh, in many cases of the government projects are assigned to the municipalities. And of course, if they are corrupt, your, your information is insecure. So I personally have been involved in the project in Somaliland, which dealt with, with title, title management. And, and the uh, decision there was absolutely to use a public blockchain. Now that use case aside, the use case of tokenization is um, dealing with uh, securitization of property, securitization of property, meaning that we're issuing a plain vanilla security, nothing new here, right? The new thing is that this security is now digital and it's recorded on the blockchain. What does blockchain do for securities? It is managing the cap table. It is managing the, the ownership uh, re uh, records on the blockchain. And actually doing that on the public blockchain is one of the most secure ways of doing it. If you're doing it in an Excel table or you know some sort of a SQL database or database that you have, that's not a secure way to manage uh, people's ownership. Now, another thing that I have to mention is that securitization is done through a corporate structure. We are not giving people, we're not selling people uh, parts of real estate directly. The title is still in the name of the entity, uh, a corporate entity, right? Then that is securitized and then parts of that corporate entity that holds the asset are being sold uh, or uh, sold to investors as digital securities. Very nicely put, Yael. I love it. Thank you so much for responding to that typical objection. And just one more objection. So Cointelegraph was kind of talking about how uh, real estate tokenization hasn't lived up to its hype. But once again, you know, when I see this kind of news, to me, it's whenever the general public does not see the potential, that's where things tend to get interesting, right? Because we're either overly optimistic or underly optimistic. So how do you respond to that type of news or headline? Well, actually, it's good that you're asking this question right now, because look at Bitcoin. You know, people have started losing faith in Bitcoin and, and look where, where it's going right now. Uh, in terms of your comment about public losing faith. Um, I think everybody or most people to this day have seen this uh, graph of uh, technology development where in the beginning there's a lot of excitement and then there's kind of this uh, a reduction of excitement and like what's called a trough of disillusionment and then from there on technology is growing. Now the uh, the problem with the tokenization with tokenized space is that it's been compared to, to the uh, to the ICO, right? The initial coin offerings that have picked up really, really quickly because there was very little regulation. You know, they kind of invented its own regulatory space and then obviously there was a pushback from the regulator. With the SDOs, um, what we're doing and what, what companies in our space are doing are using existing regulation for securities. Like I said, it's plain vanilla security first and foremost. So we have something that we can rely on. On top of that, the regulation uh, uh, about tradable securities is still forthcoming. In the US, for example, it's very clear. And many other countries are now figuring out how to allow trading of private securities, right? So we're, what we're doing is we're mimicking the process of an IPO, but, only, but limiting the trade in many cases to, to accredited investors or limiting it to, product, to specific projects um, uh, of specific size or specific levels of investment to enable the trading. So uh, bottom line is that um, because the regulatory space is not, has not evolved as fast as we thought it would evolve, uh, there, there were many hurdles along the way, which now actually as of um, what's today, August 2020, we're in a really good position uh, to have STOs and to facilitate STOs in many corners of the world. So um, my, my prediction is that um, uh, either at, uh, in the last quarter of this year or beginning of next year, we're going to see this market 
really blow up, especially because as of the last two months, I've seen quite a few companies get their licenses to trade, you know, to list and trade digital securities. For example, today, uh, uh, one of our favorite uh, players in the UK called Archax has received its uh, regulatory approval. So, uh, you know, you're going to see quite a few digital securities being traded there. Uh, every single week I see in the news, uh, by the end of this year, we're going to have 10 to 20 prominent exchanges uh, trading digital securities, and you'll see this market go up really quickly. Looking forward to that, yeah. And I must ask you, is that the ultimate dream of yours to have a borderless kind of decentralized space where you can invest in real estate and have fractional investments for the people who cannot afford to buy uh, a, an actual house at the moment? Is that kind of the ultimate goal? What is it, what is the end vision for you? Yes, with a small correction. It's not going to be a decentralized space because ultimately real estate is a real world asset. However, I'm happy that you used that word decentralized and I'll get to it in a second. So it is definitely our dream to have borderless, limitless, frictionless transactions to enable as many people to own uh, or to benefit from the asset class of real estate. They do not have to own an asset directly. They do not have to invest huge amounts of money and have their money um, be tied up for many years before they can take it out. My mm -hmm. dream is to make that happen. Now, in terms of the decentralized space or DeFi space, there is a great connection between what we do and DeFi. What we're doing ultimately is finance, is alternative investment space finance. Now, because we have the blockchain connection, because ultimately security tokens are listed or, or rather saved on the, on the blockchain, right? They're generated on the blockchain. We can secure, we can collateralize these tokens and, and apply for loans from DeFi companies, right? So people who are buying our tokens may be eligible for financing on DeFi platforms. And that's where all the fun starts because as you guys probably know, the, one of the biggest industries out there is finance, is loans, uh, you know, mortgages, anything that, that has to deal with creation of money and DeFi space is, is really one of the most exciting spaces right now. And we're definitely uh, found, found a way to connect this deeply centralized space of real estate ownership with DeFi, which I think is super exciting. That is very exciting. And is that kind of how you see the future of DeFi playing? Like DeFi kind of being uh, connected to the more regulated and centralized worlds in order to expand and, you know, reach that mass adoption that it's trying to reach? Absolutely. And you're going to see people, uh, people's bank accounts, you know, uh, uh, or assets that are stored in the traditional way be used to obtain loans from DeFi. And, that, and that's exactly what we're doing ultimately. Um, we're working on, on different ways right now to actually enable traditional bank customers in different countries to, to buy uh, tokenized offerings, right? So, so that, that's gonna be a major, major breakthrough. Once that happens, people will have faith in the industry because there's, you know, there's nothing we can do about the fact that people still trust the banks. And, and you know, uh, regulated entities. It's going to take time for them to to move over to DeFi. So this is kind of a bridge to that. That sounds like a great bridge. It's very important to create more of these bridges to make DeFi accessible to the masses. And so as of today, if I wanted to invest my money into real estate through tokenized assets, which countries are the friendliest for me to start? So uh, the majority of the countries actually do, Alex. Uh, the, the U.S. is the most clear. They've had ATSs forever. ATS is automated trading systems that allow, you know, trading of private securities. Now, Europe is, uh, you know, is also very forthcoming um, with the regulations for that. And there, there are several exchanges that now have the uh, approvals to trade securities. Now, uh, Hong Kong and Singapore are working on these regulations. In fact, there, I've, I've heard that there, there are a few exchanges coming out with licenses. There are a few countries that actually have not uh, legalized or specifically addressed it. Um, uh, a lot of South American countries haven't, for example, Mexico, but they haven't explicitly prohibited it either. So well, uh, some legal opinions are required. Uh, however, we, we, it seems to be that uh, Mexican citizens, for example, uh, may be allowed to trade on, on American exchanges, for example. 
Um, so some countries like China, of course, uh, still do not allow uh, security token transactions. India is a very problematic country because in general, taking money out uh, of the country is complicated. You know, any, any, any jurisdictions that are limiting uh, outflow of, of funds, you know, also Russia. So, so the, these jurisdictions are not advisable, but the, the majority uh, of the, the majority of the countries, Alex, are actually in favor of, of letting, letting their, their citizens enjoy, um, enjoy from, from this new development. So what if, for instance, you know, I had a small apartment that I was using, I was renting on Airbnb or something like that. And I decided that all of a sudden I'm like, you know what, I would love to create this fractionalized investment. It's in a emerging country. Like how difficult or how easy is it for me to already be able to tokenize my property and actually start uh, getting people to invest in it? So emerging countries are more complicated because in general, you know, you have to have due diligence on the asset and make sure that um, you know, ownership is recorded and, and checked. So on most of the platforms like SolidBlock uh, do due diligence on every single asset that is, that is listed on the platform. Um, the majority of the uh, platforms as well are working with slightly larger assets um, because tokenization is still not a cheap process, mainly because of legal and compliance requirements. However, there are companies like Realty, for example, in the US, that are tokenizing um, uh, private homes, uh, and that's fantastic. Uh, um, now, these homes usually have obviously some sort of a yield component from the rental uh, that is then distributed to investors of the property. So, whether you have an Airbnb or just you know a general asset, you can you can definitely benefit from the model of tokenization. Now, the questions that are, that that we would need to ask is whether this is appropriate for an asset in every country, or you know what are the risk factors. Uh, at the end of the day, people are investing. So they need to feel comfortable with the investment. They, they need to do their own risk assessment. They need to understand um, whether tomorrow, you know, uh, because, because of Corona, you will not have, uh, you will not have income or, or the value of your investment if it's for Airbnb, for example, will go down. So the, again, if you can convince the investors that this is a good investment, the technology is out there for you to help you, uh, to help you tokenize. Fantastic. And I must ask you, like, yeah, like it, this show is called Kryptonites, you know, as in the kryptonite of Superman. So if real estate was Superman and there was a kryptonite at the moment that you really would like to solve in order to push this space and really create this asset tokenization behind real estate accessible to all, like what is the number one kryptonite at the moment that you would like to uh, uh, change or improve? That's a fantastic question. So my main challenge really is the global structure um, of these investments. And it's, it's fairly expensive and uh, uh, their taxation and uh, regulatory requirements. So, you know, if I could just make a wish and, and, and make that go away, you know, I, I, w I would love that. But you know what? This is people's uncertainty and inability to jump on board with new technologies. I think at the end of the day, we'll, what, we'll, what we're lacking here is global education and, and support for you know, new investment models. So once we overcome that, all the other, all the other things are simply you know, procedural or bureaucratic. We'll, we'll, we'll get them solved. We need people. We need people to get on board. I feel your optimism from where I am right now, yeah. <laughs> and tell us a little bit more about Solid Block and what you're doing, and you know where are you the most active? I know on LinkedIn you're quite active. I see lots of posts, and you're sharing information about asset tokenization, and we'd love to hear more. So we are we are active in the United States, of course, and in Europe. Um, we have several assets in those countries. Uh, we do have some project major projects coming up in Asia. Um, and so, so they will be announced. Um, and in terms of investors, we're serving investors from almost every corner of the world. So at the end of the day, we're a marketplace. We have quite a few projects on the marketplace um, that we're actually, we're launching the marketplace in the beginning of September uh, with all our projects. Uh, and, but, but before, before it's launched, uh, all, the, all the investors that are reaching out right now will be happy to present you know, what we have and, and even uh, get them in on 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 some 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 really good uh, levels, but um, you know, 
our ultimate goal is to enable in, in any investor anywhere to come and enjoy this new asset class. So we're not limited. Uh, so we're not limited to only accredited investors. We do have some projects where we're allowing retail investors to come in, and we've been adamant about doing that to make sure that we find a way for anybody to come in and invest uh, legally and and uh, compliantly. That sounds so interesting because I mean, there's so many opportunities, right? It's endless. I even right. heard recently that uh, Ave, you talked about DeFi earlier, are really interested in, in tokenized mortgages. Uh, and it just seems like the, the opportunities are endless, aren't they? Absolutely. All right, guys, there you have it. We talked all about real estate, asset tokenization, security tokens, how real estate and DeFi will probably combine in the future to offer an open platform to invest in the world of real estate. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and blast that bell notification. Join us every Wednesday, 8 o'clock BST, premiering at a PC near you. Thank you so much, guys.